Are your students basically fishing for notes when it comes to the bass clef? Here's a little story I use with my students to help them remember the bass clef notes. I start by drawing out the staff, bass clef, and middle C. I then remind the student that we are going to look at the notes under the C. And by C, I mean C, as in water. They always enjoy the pun, but I also mean it literally. I then turn the top line of the staff into our water line. Next, I ask them what's at the bottom of the C? Sand. So we draw the sand in the bottom space. There is a very important line that we highlight next. It's the dividing D line. This line divides the waters into the surface waters and the deep, dark depths of the sea. Our scene is set, so now it's time to fill in our note characters. We start on the surface of the water. What floats on the water? A boat. So we have B for boat. The boat casts its fishing line into the sea. The base clef is the hook, and its enormous size immediately catches the attention of the fish, who gets caught on the line. Crawling along on the sand at the bottom of the sea is our crab. As I said, the crab crawls on the B bottom of the sea. It's a good fishing spot, so the boat casts its anchor out into the sea and it lands in the sand. What's also at the bottom of the sea? All the gross gunk that slowly collects down there. So we have G, the gross gunk at the bottom of the sea. Now from these notes, we can figure out any remaining notes, but kids always want the full picture, so we can keep on going. Lurking in the water, hoping to catch something or someone that falls off the boat is a creature who swims half in the water and half above it. A for alligator. Next, we have a truly adventurous animal, one that knows no limits when it comes to exploring. It's fluffy, it's cute, it's the scuba diving guinea pig. Because of the absurdity of this, this is the one creature kids remember long after they've moved on from this story. We also have the shocking electric eel, E for eel. And for kids who want something on the dividing D line, we have the diver. And there we have it, our under the sea tale. I usually teach this over several lessons, adding a new note each time. Every time we add a new note, I ask my students to make their version of their updated under the sea adventure at home during their practice time. When beginning to play music with the bass clef, what we'll usually do is color in the sand space with a yellow marker, draw in the water line, and darken the dividing D line, just to give the student a point of reference to be able to figure out the other notes. I hope this story-based approach helps your students understand the bass clef a little bit better.